present a word scholar I got and stock um, was from went from to 85.5 uh, cents a share this year. This morning and our recommendation is to sell and here's why. Alright, so a brief little description about Rock 10. Rock 10 is one of the leading manufacturers in the United States in the consumer and corrugated packaging um, sector. Um, they produce high quality containers and help ship the products based on customers' needs. Um, they, can, they create value for their customers by constantly innovating and developing new products. Um, and they operate in three business segments, the consumer packaging segment, the corrugated packaging segment, and their recycling packaging segment. And a recent business development was in 2011, they acquired Smurfit Stone. Alright, so the corrugated packaging segment. This segment comprises of your container board mills, and how they convert them to their final process, which you can see right up there. Um, the segment provides safe packaging and shipments for industrial, for commercial, and industrial prop, um, products, and it is one of the largest in the United States based on tons produced. All right, the consumer packaging segment. The second segment of Rock Tank consists of integrated system or recycling mills and paperboard mills. Um, they package items such as household items, such as what you can see up there. Um, this segment also consists of point of purchase displays, which is what you see when you walk past the store, but it's a dwindling part of their business. Um, and one of their largest customers is actually Procter & Gamble. All right, the recycling segment. This segment um, operates by acquiring recovered paper, mill, uh, recovered paper from Rock Tens mills and their third party mills. They place these mills pretty close to Rock Tens mills so they can cut down on transportation costs. And also what this segment does is they work with um, Rock 10, or they, they work with Rock 10 and their customers to kind of help their customers be more energy efficient and cut down on their um, energy cost. Now, Rock 10 realized one of the suppliers of raw materials as recycled fiber and virgin fiber, as well as recovered paperboard. They also heavily um, depend on transportation costs and energy. All right, so a little bit more about the industry. This industry is very highly competitive. There's really no one player that completely dominates the market. It's very much spread out. Um, the demand is closely tied to that of the economy. So when consumer income is up, you're going to see an increase in all your sales and financials. And when demand is down, you're going to see all those information go down. Um, and there's a potential... There is a potential to possibly backward integrate from our customers that they could backward integrate into our segment and kind of hurt that. All right, SWOT analysis. Although I said there's no one player that completely dominates the industry, Rock 10 really does have a large amount of market share compared to other firms in this industry. Um, they're a diversified business with their three different business segments. Um, a weakness of Rock 10 is that they really don't have any international presence like other firms such as International Paper or Packaging Corporation of America. This could kind of deter um, other, other potential customers to go with that firm instead of, instead of Rock 10. Um, opportunities, kind of there's some changing dynamics in the industry. More people want to be fuel efficient and energy efficient today. So the recycling business, you might see that start to uh, increase. And threats, again, the intense competition, what I talked about and then your inability to win price wars, which is when um, people try to be the lowest, low-cost provider because there's really no product differentiation between any of the companies in this industry. All right, valuation. Um, we did two different valuation methods, the price multiples valuation method and the corporate valuation method. Just a little general overview. Um, we think that Rock 10 has made, some, made a few poor decisions over the last couple years with the Hodge Mill acquisition and keeping their management team on. We really don't think that they coincided with the goals that Rock 10 wanted, so it kind of hurt them and they just actually got rid of those ma that management team in the fourth quarter. And we've yet to see how they kind of adjusted for that yet. Now we use valuation approach as multiples. Um, it's five, five year average for five competitors. We came up with a price of $77. The margin of safety was 1.25. It's just compensate for the size. It's because um, Rectan is one of the major competitors. 
an adjustment factor because of this estimate of the estimate, so it was 25%. Good. Okay, so the corporate valuation. We use the percentage of sales approach to come up with your future account values. Um, our growth was estimated by taking the 2012 ROE and times it by the retention ratio. Our WAC was calculated by obviously taking our debt to equity mix. Um, our cost of equity was taken by using the CAPM formula. And the debt was calculated by taking the outstanding interest rate on the 10 year bonds. Um, we then estimated your future free cash flows. And then from that, we found the present value. And then we found the value of operations right up here. And as you can see, we found the per share value amount to be $75.11. All right, so our financial analysis was based on our percentage of sales approach, like I said. Um, we increased the dividend five cents per share every year based on current trends that they showed. Their dividend was estimated increasing five cents per share every year. Um, all their performance was pretty consistent with that of the industry. But one issue we did find was that they had a very, very low cash ratio compared to the rest of the competitors. And that could lead to some liquidity issues, especially with paying back debt and issues like that. All right. Investment risk. We don't think Rock 10 has yet to turn around their Smurfer Stone acquisition. They acquired a lot of employees, and a lot of, and a lot of those employees have underfunded pensions, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Um, Rock 10 is also very dependent on their suppliers of raw materials. So basically, if the raw materials increase their costs and pass that along to Rock 10, Rock 10 is either going to have to make a decision to pass that, pass that cost along to their customers, possibly either inability to lose or inability to win those price wars or you're going to see your profit margins kind of shrink there. You're, you also have stricter environmental regulations than what you had five years ago. And, and Ty is going to discuss the labor unions and underfunded pensions. Now, as you can see, since they acquired Smurfit Stone, their, <coughs> their revenues increased 88%. So corrugated packaging is the one of the major sectors they went after. And but the problem with that is are they going in the wrong directions? As you, as you can see, profit margin shrank to um, 6% from 19% in corrugating packaging. The ROE on consumer packaging, which is the one, most profitable one, went from 29% to 10%, which is this is um, showcase that it's really going in the wrong direction as far as we think. Now, as far as they also acquired a lot of uh, employees from Smurfit Stone, now the only 8% are not covered by the late, are not in the labor union agreement. Uh, and 26% working either on the expired contract or on the contract that expired within a year, which is going to showcase it's gonna, when they're going to do a lot of negotiations, they're going to create some problems. There's four pension plans. They came from $471 million um, obligation to almost $5 billion in pension obligations. And their fair value increased as well. One minute. Okay. And um, undefined pension status increased significantly as well. They went to $3 billion and uh, $1 billion and uh, 493 Okay, so basically our investment summary for Rock 10. Basically, if you're investing in Rock 10 for the long term, we recommend to sell for them. Um, we think they kind of bit off more than they can chew with the Smurf of Stone and um, Hodge Mill projects. They didn't really exactly place themselves to best succeed right there, and we haven't seen any indications yet that they have recovered from that. So until that, we don't recommend um, buying them. They have a high operating leverage, which very increases your business risk. So an increase in demand can very help them, but then again, an increase or a decrease in demand can very, very much hurt them. Um, what Natai talked about with the labor unions, they have so many uh, underfunded pensions, and the labor unions are about to go on strike. Tired. And okay. <laughs> and the cash ratio is very low. So, thanks, guys, for listening. Any questions? One of the 
of the things that um, interests me, yes. and I'm going to say because of my age and my infirmity, uh, is the pension fund. Yes. How would changes in interest rates affect that liability? How would changes in interest rates affect the liability? Well... Well, they diversified a lot in the uh, government securities as well. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if the interest rates are going to go up, obviously their fair reality is going to decrease. That would probably be better. That would probably be better for them. What about their liabilities? I'm sorry? What about their liabilities? Yeah, that's, that's their liabilities. The decrease. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. The, liabil the liability is going to increase because if uh, if, if the interest rates are going to go up, they, they can get more returns in the market and their discount rate is going to go down. So. Okay. Um, the other thing, one of the things on their balance sheet was uh, goodwill. It was like 18% yes. of their, of their uh, assets. Mm -hmm. How does this affect your analysis? Um, with our financial analysis, we basically kept that the same we don't really know how to estimate goodwill for the future because we don't know what's going to happen with them, how they're maybe they could possibly not turn around that um, Hodge Mill project or the Smirk of Stone acquisition thing and see it go down. But if they turn it around, you would obviously see goodwill go up. So. How much of that will be amortized over the future? Any of it, does it stay on the balance sheet? Does it get amortized off? You're asking me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had one. Yeah. Course in accounting, my entire. Goodwill test. Yeah. 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 We didn't really account for good. We kind of left goodwill kind of stable across the uh, across the future years when we calculate our valuations and our financial analysis. Okay. So. I wanted to hear a little bit more about the Smurfit Stone acquisition in your slide mm -hmm. presentation. You said um, I think they were unable to turn this around and. Yeah. Um, could you just tell me a little bit more of your rationale behind? Because um, I know they talked about potential synergies, but what made it? What made you doubt their ability? To well, we kind of. I think it has to go back to with the pension risk because they acquired. They acquired almost. They doubled their business and they almost doubled their employees counts, and all those pensions were then underfunded. So we think that kind of increased the risk because we don't know if they'll be able to fund those pensions. Plus, market phone is it in corrugated pension. So it's when they concentrate more of the effort on a corrugated sector instead of consumer packaging, which is more profitable, they kind of trade off as they trade off highest net higher returns for the lower um, profit margin and returns on that. Plus on top of that, if you if you heard about Hodge Hodge uh, when they capped the old management under and the um, plant was under uh, they weren't performing uh, at all, so we won't start. You mentioned that their consumer business is decreasing. Obviously, a lot of that has to do with the acquisition. What is the st strategy? I mean, what was their rationale to move towards a lower return, lower margin business? Or is that is that business showing lower returns right now, but over time is supposed to move more to the average? Well, they trying to integrate as much as possible. And in the, in, in, the, in the past, they did a lot of acquisition and mergers, and that's how the whole industry actually go by. They, they concentrate a lot of the mergers and acquisition. But the Of course, it's always a good thing to hear from your customers and see what's see what they think about your business because I mean the more you know about what they want, the better you can adapt and kind of you know um, what's the word I'm looking for kind of appear to their needs. Does that make so. sense? So when you're basically in a commodity, 
the corrugated mm -hmm. type of thing when you're largely price driven? Well, they also depend highly on the only 10% 10, 10 of the customers provide 16% of their net sales. So they very depend on those big, consumer, big customers. Although like none of the customers actually have more than 10% of their shares. They, I mean, 10% of the of, of the sales, they, they still depend on them. So that's why they try. And I think I think you almost kind of need a mix, and there's a fine line between that because obviously there's no really product difference, so you need to just do mass production. Mm -hmm. But for some of your larger customers, they might need something special, so you might need to adapt for them, especially with a consumer like Procter and Gamble. It's everywhere, so they might need to do something. I want to ask about your PD, your valuation method. Yes. Um, I think you said you use a five-year average and looked at five competitors. I guess what, um, in addition to that, how did you come to sort of your growth assumptions? Growth assumptions? Mm -hmm. So what I used for the what I used them for the growth rate? Right. Basically, I just took the 2012 ROE and multiplied it by the retention ratio, so what they kept in. The Okay. So that, that's how that's how I got their growth rate. Okay. And it was like sustainable yep. growth. Yeah, was, I forget the exact number that it was. For it. So you used their prior year and, and looking forward, so you kept that constant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just kept that constant over the last couple of years. We don't really, they already acquired Smurfit Stone and Hodge Mill, so we didn't really see any um, big acquisitions again in the next five years. So they already There's nobody left to work Yeah, on. exactly. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, you, you highlight a risk with the pension stuff, and I apologize mm -hmm. I was taking this. Can you talk about the margin risk? It, uh, these commodity companies, it yes. all, it's all about wild swings and mm -hmm. kind of what their key components are and, and how those are trending and kind of what your assessment was and you know, how that might impact in the near term. The, the price of the, like, the raw materials? The raw materials, yeah. Well, obviously, if you're, if you're going to see them go up, they're either going to have to make a decision sure. whether to pass that uh, cost along to the customers, mm -hmm. which then they might lose those price scores that I was talking about, mm -hmm. or you're going to see their profit margin shrink. Historically, so, are, they, are they able to pass through it, or is there a lag between when they can pass it to, um, pass it to the customer? Do they have to feel the pain, and then the price increase comes later? Yeah, yeah, um, I understand what you're saying. They, they, they indicated in their annual report that they are passing the cost uh, to the consumers, but at the same time, they are relying on those major customers. So. Okay. About 90% uh, of their holdings are institutional, with Fidelity having over 10%. How is this a, a benefit? How are they handling it? Well or not? How are they handling like, firms like Fidelity? Well, it, how would this affect their their strategy? How would this be important to them? Would this be a risk for a new investor coming? I think if they invest in, um, they try and to, to keep their because it's mm -hmm. high institutional enrollment, they try to keep their credit rating significantly higher. Mm -hmm. So therefore, they're not trying to get a more risky um, positions in the future. Mm -hmm. yes. It's, it's a good thing that's a lot of institutions. Because I was astonished when I looked at the bid asks for yeah. mm -hmm. enormous. Large. Well, they pay a lot of dividends. Mm -hmm. so it's, it's I, um, I didn't hear a lot about cash flow, so I was wondering if you could characterize their cash flow situation. Um, yeah, it's not. They have very low um, free cash flow going forward. I guess it has to do with the fact that they have to fund those pensions. And, yeah. I guess then could that be a potential so the free cash flow is low because yeah. of the pensions um, did you I guess is there a risk to the upside if they were to say use that cash flow to um, refinance debt and then they'd have lower interest expense they have higher free cash flow kind of um, what, I guess what do you, your assumption is for cash flow going forward then to just have to pay the pension? Yeah, they're, they're, they're probably just going to have to do that. Because I don't really see them, they can't really cut the, I mean they could, but I don't really see them cutting the dividend or anything like that, trying to get cash or anything like that. Okay. 
So is that is that I answer your question or? I think so. Yeah. You think so? Okay. Yeah. If I didn't, you can just let me know. I'll, I'll, <laughs> no, I'll yeah. try and yeah. Let's okay. go with the yes. Okay. All right. We'll actually, actually, yesterday yeah. the chairman indicated that they were going to make the minimum contributions to the pension funds because once that money is there, uh, time? Oh, okay. okay. So I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Since I'm not asking you, yeah. actually he indicated that they were going to make the minimum because once that money is in there, it's in there. Mm -hmm. And that they wanted to keep as much free available. That's what I was going with. And uh, their only thing on the other yeah. side was mm -hmm. if the pension benefit, what trust insurance corporation or whatever, it's called now. Mm -hmm. uh, if they found it too risky and they raised the premiums, then mm -hmm. this would be a trade-off of, of whether or not they would pay the attention. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, thanks so much for listening Thank to us, guys. Yeah. I appreciate everything. Well done. Sure. Thank you. Thank you.